Hello geeks and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. This is Sai Prakash here and today we are here to solve the 29th day of uh, 30 day Geeks for Geeks coding challenge. And uh, I have a small announcement to make before starting the video. So many of you have asked uh, in even in the Twitter or uh, even in uh, YouTube comments that uh, no. So we are posting the videos, but uh, you cannot see the previous day tracks, right? So many of you have asked, right? You know uh, whether uh, they can you know see all the tracks and they can submit or not. So uh, we are uh, going to you know uh, release all the tracks. Right, so in the next days, so you can see all the 30 day tracks, and if you have missed any problem, right, so no need to worry. Uh, you can go back to the problem. You will you, you will be uh, given option to you know see all the tracks. So I uh, keep that in mind, right? So now let's uh, today uh, solve the today's problem, and it is called as elixir of life. And uh, so elixir of life, life uh, in general means that it is a it is a magical portion which gives us uh, no mortality, immortality, right? So let's see the problem statement. So the problem statement is uh, Flamel is making an elixir of life by, uh, but he is missing a secret ingredient. So in his portion that he is trying to make to attain uh, immortality, he's going to uh, yeah he is missing a secret ingredient. By the way, uh, no most of the time the story is irre irrelevant to our solution, but let's read the problem. So a set of contiguous plants uh, that is substrings from a garden of Eden. So Eden is going to be our string, and a substring is going to be a set of contiguous plants. And the garden consists of various plants represented by string S, uh, where each letter represents a different plant. So as I said previously, right? So but the prophecy has predicted, right? So this is an important statement to understand here. But the prophecy has pr predicted that uh, correct set of plants required to make the potion. So whatever uh, that the portion is requires right so it is going to be a contiguous uh, pattern that is a substring at the beginning of the forest that is a prefix comma end of the forest so the portion that he requires uh, the prophecy is saying that it is going to be a, a substring which is going to be a prefix and also suffix and also there's a very important statement that is being given here is that and uh, they say that uh, the continuous pattern which is the prefix and suffix and will also be the most frequent uh, subsequence in the entire forest, right? So whatever prefix or suffix is there, so which is uh, going to be used as a portion of in our uh, elixir, that they say that the, so it has been established by the prophecy that it is going to be the most uh, frequent sequence in our entire forest, right? So we don't need to know so go uh, separately and write functions for you no know, checking whether we which is uh, what is the frequent uh, sequence from that string. So it is it is established by the prophecy that. Uh, the string that the substring which is the which is the going to be uh, my prefix and also my suffix will be the most frequent uh, sequence in my entire forest and so the main part here is identify the substring of plants required to make the elixir and find out the number of time it appears in the forest so uh, generally if you have uh, taken this statement out of this equation right so this is going to be a very different problem but since we are uh, the prophecy has established a few uh, facts right so the problem uh, will become pretty easy to solve than you think it is right so <clears throat> what i'm going to do is that so according to the prophecy my uh, portion that which i have to return which is used for the elixir is going to be my prefix and my suffix right so i i will try and find only this right so i'm, I'm not going to know uh, take care of any frequencies I'm, I'm only going to do one thing because it is being established by the prophecy right i'm only going to know try and find the uh, prefix which is also a suffix once I have that, uh, since it is been established, it is going to be the most sequ frequent sequence. I'm going to return the count of that particular sequence that is substring, right? So this is easy to under uh, no solve, right? So it hardly takes like three to four lines in Python, and uh, let's try and solve this problem. So uh, as I've said, I'm going to no simply loop in my uh, array, so in my list. So I'm going to do range based list. So in the length of uh, let's call it as smallest. I don't like capitals, right? So now this is what we're going to do. We're going to calculate the prefix at that point. So prefix is going to be simply s of uh, s till that point. So till till that index, right? So it first index the prefix is going to be the first index. At second index it's going to be uh, first and second index is exactly. So it, it goes like this. So I'm going to calculate the prefix. And once I have a prefix, uh, according to this prophecy, you no, know, if uh, this prefix to be my uh, secret portion, that secret ingredient, that secret ingredient that I require, then it has to be my suffix as well. 
right so i'm going to check that so you can do that manually or, uh, or also but in python there is a beautiful method you no know, python python has best sync handling of all the languages even java has the avism but python is the best uh, in terms of you no know, in build function so i'm going to use one of that uh, so i'm going to say if uh, s dot ends with so ends with is, is nothing but uh, it is a python inbuilt function so it is going to check uh, if uh, let's say i have a string called as abc right so if i uh, say that abc dot ends with c it's going to return me true and if i say abc dot ends with uh, ce then it is going to return me false right so it is basically it is going to check whether if it uh, the given uh, argument that we are passing whether it is my uh, no suffix or not so this is what we are going to do we are going to check whether if our prefix is equal to our suffix and if that's the case then uh, our prophecy is being satisfied so i'm going to simply return see i'm doing this only because they said that it is the most frequent sequence in my entire array so i no need to know do any checking or i no need to know write uh, methods to know uh, confirm that uh, this is the most frequent sequence because it, since it has been already be established i'm i'm simply going to return the frequency of my prefix right so for that i'm going to say s dot count of uh, prefix right so if that's not the case by default we are going to return one right so this is what happened right so uh, in a cases where uh, there is no prefix and suffix we are simply returning one right so let's let me compile this and uh, see if it satisfies the condition or not so and it is satisfied and coming to time complexities so s dot n with uh it works on linear uh, complexity so i have uh, checked with the documentations i have seen through the stack overflow and s dot n is always going to be linear uh, is linear in time so it is not going to be n square as i thought because uh, i thought it is going to you know uh, you have two things so it is going to do each character but it is going to compare it in linear time so it uh, n with is going to be linear time s dot count s dot count is only uh, going to do once and uh, this is also going to be in a linear time so overall a time complexity so uh, if for generic prefix uh, it is always a constant right so we are we are not performing any uh, computations here so we are directly you no know, pointing our indexes so our overall overall time complexity uh, i think it it comes up to uh, big of n right and uh, since we are uh, no, trying to know uh, also return the frequency so it, it is not going to be exactly one it is going to be like 2n or something and uh, if that's not the case we are returning minus one uh, sorry negative uh, sorry one as a base return and uh, so and that's it for this uh, question so this is how uh, this is one of the approach to solve this problem so this is my approach i'm not saying that my approach is the best approach the same thing with all the videos right so my approach is uh, no the idea of these solutions are you no know, uh, they so the videos have to be raw and this is not they have to be done uh, unscripted so if uh, uh, someone has someone has a problem with you no know, me uh, just walking through the code and i'm sorry for that and uh, yeah i think uh, this is a uh, it for this video and i hope uh, you like my approach and uh, thanks for watching we'll see you in the next day and as i said uh, all the tracks all the 30 tra tracks will be uh, open for all uh, once again so in geeks or geeks we will open all the tracks so that uh, if you have missed any question you can uh, resubmit that and i hope you won't miss that opportunity and uh, you know, submit all the questions uh, if you have missed anything and uh, for any doubts you can you know uh, uh, refer to this playlist and thanks for watching we'll see you in the next day